Hey guys, Fishy Baker here. Today, Nathan and I are going to be going over more of our ice fishing stuff. This is part two of our 2020 to 2021 ice fishing season setup. Today, we're gonna to be going over more of the set lines with jaw jackers and tip ups. And if you haven't seen part one, we did that on our auger setups jigging rods and some of the jigging lures we like to use so if you're interested in that link will be in the description it will also be at the end of the video that you guys can click on so make sure to watch that if you're interested otherwise i hope you enjoyed this episode it's going to be a good one and i'll talk to you guys later all right guys next we're going to kind of uh discuss our out of ordinary style tip-ups we do yeah. usually use a lot of normal tip-ups but these are a few unique ways uh, you can use tip-ups just using a rod, and the first one we have here is a jaw jacker, and I'm going to let Nathan explain that one here really quick. So what you do to set this up is you pull out the arms. They have this little, these little nails that go in the ice, which is nice. So then you have this. There are different settings on here where you set up your rod, which my rod is a... I believe 28 inch. You can see these different holes here. And so you put this clip in the different holes in order to set the length of this total arm to fit the length of what your yeah. rod is. So that is pretty slick. So then what you have here is a little loop that comes with the jaw jacker. If you can see that. Which I have it just on there like that. And then what you do is you want to keep clear of the rod path. You don't want to get hit in the face with so then what you do is you bring the rod down. And don't be afraid you're gonna break the rod. A lot of the rods yeah. that are made for this aren't gonna break. They're super flexible. They're made to do this, but this yep. is why you wanna stay clear is because if that loop does not latch onto this little hook, that is gonna slap you right in the face. Yep. So what I have here is the, it's on the little loop there, is on the little, I don't know what that's called. Yeah, it's just a little hook. And then he flips that switch down that way the hook is staying directly yep. down with the loop over the top of it. And then your line goes through this little latch here, yep. just this little holder. And what happens then is when a fish takes it, it goes down and boom, automatically sets the hook. These are legal in Wisconsin. I don't think they're legal in Minnesota. They're not legal everywhere. Yep. Um, Canada, Wisconsin, they are legal. Yep. But yeah, really unique setup and really good for trout or just quick hitting yeah. fish. Let's say you're getting to the tip ups and they're just gone by the time you get there, they're just dropping it. This is a really unique system to be able to set the hook on those fish right away. Yeah. And what we usually have on these is a bell. So this is a South Bend bell. It is super loud. And since that hook set pops up super fast, you can hear that from a very long yeah. distance away. We set these, we're gonna try and set these a little bit closer to the shanty this year, just cause we were a little late getting to them. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times the fish were popping off, but I mean, we could clearly hear that bell from all the way across the lake. What was that like 500 feet almost? Yeah, five to 600 feet. And we were sitting in the shanty and we could clearly hear when the jaw jacker was going yeah. off. So very good bell there. We, Kind of experimented with a few different kinds yeah. and that's by far the best one that we found i also like that it's very compact you know you don't have anything like getting thrown around or anything stupid like that all right next we are going to talk about the ifish pro this is a another unique setup that you can use involving a rod so you can uh reel the fish in on a rod and reel more than just the hand line so what we got here, we have our leader and a nice treble because we like trebles with our shiners, yep. nice wire leader. And then just kind of a lighter egg weight. You don't need a super heavy weight. Now, obviously that differs if you're fishing current, but we are, yep. are usually just fishing lakes and ponds. So all you really need is enough to get that shiner down. So just a little egg weight separated by a couple of beads, top and bottom, and then this little loop. So I'll let Nathan explain what that loop is for. And I also have a little... Yeah, and there's a little uh, slip bobber knot in yep. there as well just so then you can set your depth. So you put the rod right in the rod holder that comes with it. Then what you wanna do is, you know, I like just don't put the minnow on right away, drop it down the hole, set your depth, and then put the minnow on. Then, you know, that goes down the hole. And then what you do 
put down the flag first, then you put the little trigger, and then there's three settings. There is light, and then you got medium, and then you got heavy. And we usually go on the light setting. So this clip goes over the top of the flag, underneath this black thing. I know this is pretty hard to see, but yeah. there's three little sections, and uh, each one over, there's a little bit bigger of a ridge yep. before the next one, and that's what makes it harder for the fish to pull off. You have to keep the bail open. We gotta keep the bail open. So now you can see, as that line slips down, the slip bobber knot is sticking into that loop, in the small part of the loop because of the bead. Yep. So you leave your bail open on this, and when a fish takes it, boom, flag pops up, and then it's free. Um, yep. Fish can take it wherever. This is not like the jaw jacker or an automatic fisherman. It does not set the hook for you. Leave your bail open on this. Yep. And uh, it's basically a normal tip up, except you can fight on a rod and reel. Really cool setup. Yep. All right, so what we got here next is uh, what me and Nathan like to call a bell rod. This is not a proper term for it, but this is just over the years what we've ended up calling this. This is just a normal, slower action rod. This is a medium action rod, nothing special. I've just got plain mono on here. You could do the braid to floral if you want again. Um, but you know, with pike, we have a leader on here. So I just did mono to make it easier. We've got a split shot about four to five inches above. But then we do the same thing. We take this clip on bell, just clipping it right onto the, to the rod there. And you can already hear how loud that is. If this thing moves at all, you're going to hear it from a mile away. Yep. Um, so that's just another quick setup, not nearly as sophisticated as what Nathan just showed you. But another way you can set up a different line. This is really easy. Obviously, you don't have to buy any other setup. Yep. Um, but I like a nice slow action rod. You can see how that rod just kind of absorbs everything. Um, that's good if you don't get there right away. That way he doesn't feel the tension immediately. But also when you're setting the hook, you can see if I was to set the hook here, all of that power is being absorbed, just like we talked about before. Now, this isn't a noodle rod, but it's being absorbed in the middle of this rod. And that's letting all those uh, head shakes and everything really get absorbed there and making sure that fish doesn't get any slack in yep. the line. And we usually leave the bail closed and just tighten, or not tighten, loosen the drag all yeah. the way down. Yeah, that way we can also hear the drag too. This yep. is usually a rod that we do not put very far away from us. This is maybe we're jigging and yeah. we put it 10 feet away, either in the shanty or outside the shanty by just a tiny bit, or if we're, this is really nice too, for if we talked about like with Nathan's auger, the K drill, um, this is a really mobile setup where you don't have to worry about setting that up every time. You just drill one more hole and boom, you already have a setup ready to go that you can drop down right away. All right, guys, next we're gonna move on to normal standard tip-ups. Yep. This is what Nathan has here. I'll let him explain to you what he's got going on there. There's not really a difference between them. No. Uh, different colors, different brands. Nathan, let's get into it. So, one brand is Freyville, and I like the HTs way better. There's nothing really different about them. I mean, I only have two of these, and I have four of these, and I think Spencer has all HTs too. Yeah, I can confirm that. All of my tip-ups are HT. Um, some of them have bigger spools. Some of them have a little bit smaller spools. You can kind of pick and choose what you want, but honestly, even with the smaller spool, I have never been in a situation where I feel like I'm gonna run out of line. Yeah. I think the spools on these things are really smooth and they pick up the line really nice as far as when the line is frozen, you're trying to get it back all up onto the tip-up. And I think these tip-ups are just really slick if you've never set up a tip up. So all you do is, you got your little flight here, then your line is down the hole. This is all down the hole. This is sitting on the ice like this. And then you set it right through there. And that is a set tip up. Then this is down the hole, fish pulls, flight goes up, take that out and rip into them. So we're going to go over a little bit of a different style of a tip-up, and this is a Frable tip-up. This is not a traditional one, obviously, like what Nathan has shown you, but uh, what is nice about this one is it is a thermal tip-up. So this goes perfectly 
over the top of the hole um, you can see here and they even has a little tackle box there so you can put your hooks in there nothing gets tangled I have a quick strike rig on this one for a bigger bait but uh, yeah basically same setup I think this is really nice and then you don't have to worry about uh, constantly checking every hour or two on cleaning up that hole you know with this tip up that it is always going to be clean you don't have to worry about big ice chunks or anything so the overhead view here is you take your flag and you can see it's got this big slot right here that is really nice that wire is straight down you just twist it right over the top it's not going anywhere super sensitive the second i pull boom that thing is off and going i think the spool on this one is super smooth and nice um i think it's honestly a bit better than the other frable tip-ups yeah um this is more expensive and that's probably why Mm -hmm. It's a more expensive tip-up. It'll keep your holes from freezing. It's a nicer overall design. And it's a really smooth spool that I enjoy using. Uh, so different style of tip-up again, but uh, no rod and reel. You can see nice tackle box area there that I can just store it in and clip it on. And now I don't have to worry about those hooks getting all caught up in my bucket or sled or whatever I may store this in. Yep. And that was the good thing about the jaw jacker is how you can store it. Your jaw jacker is not gonna get tangled with anything because of how compact that is. That's the same thing with this. Another thing we have here is just a little modification you can make to the tip up. Here's an older version, here's a newer version. And these are blue tips. Now, what they are is a Bluetooth connected device. You place it on the metal part of the flag. And when that flag goes up, it has a sensor and you have the app on your phone. And what that's gonna do is because of the Bluetooth on these blue tips, it's gonna buzz your phone, make a bunch of noise so you know that that tip up is up. This is really good if you're fishing on a point or around a corner in a couple different bays and really helpful because a lot of times me and Nathan are fishing on a weed flat and have tip ups on one lake where they're around the corner and we can't really see them that much. But with this, it's really nice being able to know exactly when that flag goes up by getting notifications on your phone. We always have our phones on us. So the phone's buzzing away and you know immediately that you have another fish on. It's also good for night fishing too, if you have tip ups. Yes, yeah, so you can because see blinking. Another thing that these things both have is you can't see it as clear on this one, but this one does have it in this newer model. But this top part in the blue tips is a light. And so when it goes up, not only does it sense that it's up and buzz your phone, but the light also turns on telling you that you have a fish. Super unique. Those have gotten really popular in the last couple of years and super great tool. All right, so Nathan's got it on, it is sideways. I've got it on my phone, and we're gonna see the reaction time here. Boom, flag goes up instantly. My phone is buzzing away. It is making a lot of noise and uh, very loud. You can see that was like a split second after he turned that thing up. And so very cool, lets you know from a far distance away. And you can see the bright light on this one as yep. well flashing away we have a light right above us so a little bit hard to see but even with that you can see that it's lighting up all right guys that does it for part two of this series thank you so much for watching next we are going to talk about electronics in the next part that'll be next week so stay tuned for that hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll catch you all later